It has been multiple years now since Notion and Coda as well as many other tools out there in the productivity space, knowledge management or data management have released their own AI tools within their software to surface information on and which databases and page content with AI. So in this video, we are looking specifically at Notion AI and Coda AI and the state of artificial intelligence within those tools after one year and a half or two years since the craziness of AI has spread throughout the software world and integrated into our daily lives increasingly more. Within Notion AI and Coda AI in this video, we are looking at specifically the state of AI when it comes to writing content on a page that could be on a Notion page or a Coda page within a Coda doc. We're also looking at AI chat that is Notion AI Q&A in the Notion ecosystem that is still in beta and it has a wait list so not every workspace has it yet activated and within Coda we're looking at Coda chat and how that differs between these two tools and finally we're also looking at the state of things in Notion and Coda when it comes to properties or columns in databases and tables within Notion and Coda and how you can integrate AI within those properties looking at a specific use case for a CRM for example and data validation within a database or table of contacts. The first use case we are looking at is Notion AI properties for example let's go to the contacts database and within this database, you can see that right now there are only regular Notion properties. So email, text properties, phone numbers, a relation property. And let's open one of the pages just for more clarity of visualization of data. And let's add a new property. When I select add a new property, I now see four options. AI summary, AI custom autofill, AI translation and AI keywords. So these are AI based properties in addition to all the other property types that are normal in Notion and that have been always there, at least in the past few years. These AI properties as well have been there for one year or a bit more than that and haven't changed much since the beginning. The latest addition has been AI keywords and AI custom autofit as well. That can be quite useful for crafting your own AI prompt in terms of what you want Notion AI to do within that database. AI summary can be useful when you have lots of data in a database page. That could be for meeting notes, for example. If you take notes inside a meeting page, you will have all those notes. And maybe you want to create a summary using AI summary based on those notes, as well as the properties within the database to help people get up to speed, meaning understand quickly what happened or what was discussed during a meeting at a glance from a notion database view, instead of having to open each page. So that's a very common use case of artificial intelligence in general that is summarizing large pieces of content to resurface the most important insights. And the promise of that from a philosophical point of view or practical one in the world of work or productivity is to save time. Because if you have lots of information rather than reading everything on your own and passing through the key insights processing them by yourself, maybe by taking notes or highlighting or resurfacing key pieces of information, you let artificial intelligence do that job for you because it specializes in actually understanding text or at least find patterns in large chunks of text. And so that is why AI is often used for this use case. AI custom autofill can be used with your own custom prompt. So if I select that option, this is a text type property and I can select auto update on page edits, meaning that whenever there is a edit on this page in a database, it can be an edit in the property options, or it could be an edit on the page body or a comment on the page. These are all considered edits in Notion. Then the AI property here would be automatically updated. If this toggle is off, that means you can only update the content or the output of that AI property manually. In here, you can define the prompt that you want to give the AI. For example, let's take the use case of a CRM where we have contacts and organizations, which is what I'm using here for this example. And let's say we want to validate data. In particular, we want to see if the city that is within each contact is actually valid and it is located in the US because let's assume that the contact database only contains people from the US. So for this purpose, I can write a prompt, which I'm going to create right now and that I can refine them based on how Notion AI performs according to my judgment, reviewing the outputs. And once I write the prompt, I can try on this page to see the output of the AI. 
I can then autofill all pages if I want to apply it to all the existing pages in the database. I can turn it off and I can save changes like this. When it comes to AI translation and AI keywords, AI translation allows you to translate a specific property or all the properties in database or just some of them from one language to another. Whereas AI keywords generates keywords automatically. You can also add a custom prompt for the specific keywords that you want to include if you want to be more precise and you can allow it to generate new options or not. And when you apply the automatic keywords, Notion AI will add tags in a multi-select property fashion to that property based on the context in the properties as well as on the body of that Notion page. In Coda tables, you can apply AI in any column. That means that Coda AI is capable of recognizing column types in Coda and fill out those values according to the column type. That includes relation columns. In any column in Coda, you can click on the column option and you will find field values. For example, that applies to a text type column, which is the last name in this example that I'm showing. And when you select field values, one of the options is AI. And this option allows you to prompt Coda AI with specific instructions to fill out that column depending on your needs. You can summarize data from other columns in the table. You can find action items, key insights, or write a custom prompt. These options are similar to the ones that we saw in Notion AI properties, for example. You can also select an input that is one of the columns that you can feed into the prompt to consider for filling out that value. The preview panel allows you to view a preview of the output of the AI prompt enrichment before you actually fill the column because Coda AI is not unlimited like Notion AI is, or at least there is an option to have it unlimited, but the base plan has a certain monthly limit to it. So using AI in tables, especially when you have many rows in Coda, can consume your credits quite quickly if you're not on the unlimited plan. And that is why the preview panel can be rather useful because you can also switch between different rows in your tables to see the preview of those values and then adjust your prompt accordingly before actually committing to unleashing Coda AI in the table. Let's look at the same use case that we had in Notion where I'm going to add a column and you can see here that there are also AI columns at the bottom of the column picker. You can summarize, find action items, find key insights and write a custom prompt which is what we selected in Notion. When you write a custom prompt in a Coda table, you have the added benefit of actually referencing columns from that table or formulas within your docs using the at command, as you can see here. And this is very valuable because it means that you can actually reference data programmatically and dynamically across your entire table and doc where you're using Coda AI in a table. This can give the AI much more context and you can be much more precise in your prompt engineering or writing. So I would consider this a great benefit of Coda AI and something that Notion AI properties certainly lack right now. I'm gonna use the same prompt that I used in Notion and you can see here, I can see the preview. I can also select the length of the output. In this case, it is going to be one or two words and I specify in the prompt that is yes or no. I can select the tone and the type that is what kind of data type I want in the output of this column. In this case, I want a checkbox. So this is another great benefit of Code AI. You can actually determine the type of column output that you want from the coin prompt. This should be a checkbox. I can look at the different previews. I can see that some of them are formatted as checkboxes, some of them as bullet points. That doesn't seem exactly right, but now you can see that they are actually formatted properly. So it looks okay. And I can actually fill the column once I want to deploy Coda AI on those columns. Now, because that is a Coda column, I can actually change the data type if the AI prompt was not enough. So this is gonna be a checkbox. If it is yes, it is yes. Otherwise it is no. Outside of databases, both in Notion and in Coda, you can use AI to chat with the AI assistant or bot and surface information from your documents, pages, the databases in some examples, or the Coda docs. In Coda. When it comes to Notion AI Q&A, it is still in beta. There is a wait list and I've recently recorded a video about it. Not many changes have happened since then, 
besides maybe in the quality of the output, but the functionalities are still the same. So you can chat with the agent in your workspace to surface information. And right now, the ideal way to actually structure your data to make Notion AI Q&A work best is to use content on the page because that tends to be read and incorporated better with the Notion AI Q&A as opposed to using database properties. At the same time, using database properties is a more scalable approach probably. It uses more structured data. It is more exportable, easily exportable in CSV and also importable to other tools and also easier to feed APIs if you use databases. So there is a bit of trade-off, um, but let's focus on the AI aspect of it. Notion AI Q&A mostly gets data from Notion pages and that is the best way right now. And you can watch the recent video that I recorded to see all the functionalities that you can find within Notion AI Q&A currently. When it comes to Coda AI, also there, I recorded a video some time ago and Coda AI chat is accessible from the bottom right corner, similar to Notion AI Q&A. And Coda AI is both specific to your Coda workspace, doc, pages, tables, but it also is more broad. You can also ask Coda AI questions that are generic and that pull data from the internet or from the archive or in the same way that you would chat with OpenAI's ChatGPT or other large language models out there about generic topics. When you open the Coda AI chat panel, you will find three options. You can discuss content from the specific page where you are. That is, in my case, the test data page. You can also look at a broader context that is the Coda doc where you are. In my case, that is called Sandbox and it is composed of multiple pages. Or you can specify a selection on the page. And this works best with text. And this can be used to summarize, to shorten text, elaborate. So similar to what you would do in a text column enriched with AI. In addition, you can find here at the bottom right corner that you can decide if you want faster responses, but potentially with lower quality or higher quality responses that might take a bit longer. Coda AI is also good with data manipulation and retrieving data from tables in a structured format. You can also create tables in Coda. So there is both the structured data aspect that is potent within Coda AI and the text-based retrieval that is quite effective too. For example, if I'm looking at the page context, I can also ask about some analytics from the tables within my doc. Let's say, to start simple, how many contacts are in the contacts table? So I can ask that question and I can see there are 82 contacts in the contacts table. Is that true? We can find out by doing a quick summarize count and uh, let's just add to canvas for simplicity and you can see that there are 50 contacts in the table so that is wrong and what i can do is be more precise and now the answer was correct 50. i can also directly insert responses from coda ai into the current page or i can copy the response and then paste it somewhere else so if i insert it it gets appended to the position where I am on the page. And this is the overview of Notion AI and Coda AI currently in April 2024, with particular focus on database properties and table columns in Notion and Coda, and what you can do with those at this current time. You can check out my past videos about an overview of all the features of Notion AI and Coda AI, together with use cases and drawbacks. For now, thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.